Hi there! In this video, I'm going to help you identify some small signal transistors very quickly. And this is how we're going to do it. So, we recognize this transistor here. All of us have seen these. This transistor here is a TO92 package. That's the package of the transistor. And if this is a 2N3904, this is going to be emitter base collector. And that's how it goes for all of the 2N series small package transistors. Okay, there's a lot of things that hide under the 2N name though, which kind of makes the 2N system really lack. A lot of things hide under there like FETs, uh, you'll get an NPN transistor, a PNP transistor, all hiding under 2N. So it'll be 2N blah 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 blah, and it's a FET or it'll be a PNP or a NPN or whatever they've put under there. And that's one thing that really uh, lacks about this whole 2N system. There's a better system, it's called the 2S system, and thankfully that system is quite a bit more prevalent, I find, and um, it helps troubleshooting quite a bit. So again, we have our transistor here, and I'll draw another one over here. So this transistor here, this is, we'll call this an A733, and we'll call this a C945, okay? So the basing for this is emitter, collector, base, and the same thing for this one. All they've done is they've reversed these two from the 2N series, just to frustrate you and make troubleshooting just a little bit more difficult once you get used to this. So... This is the 2S system, so whenever you see on a transistor, you'll read on a transistor, I'm sure you've probably, if you've fooled with any of this series, you recognize A733, or C945, or 1815, or anything like that, you'll recognize that. Well, always put a 2S in front of it, and then you can look up your number very easily. A lot of the data sheet searches now will just automatically edit that in because a lot of people just write A733 or C945. This is the proper part number for these pieces. They just don't put two S on there, okay? So now we know two very important things by looking at these transistors already. I know that this is a PNP transistor and I know that that's an NPN transistor. And how we define that is by this right here. A's and B's are P, N, P, C's, and D's are N, P, N transistors. So anything like 2SB, whatever, it's a P, N, P. 2SA, it's a P, N, P. 2SC, it's an N, P, N. 2SD, it's an N, P, N. So we know that these transistors are different. If you can memorize this basing here of the transistor and differentiate it from this one, you're well on your way to testing these transistors already. And you can test these with a diode tester sometimes in circuit and other times you'll have to remove them because the circuit will load it. And I'll show you how to test these transistors very quickly with a diode tester. And that's what we're going to do next. This is how you test transistors with a normal diode checker in your DMM or voltmeter or whatever you have. So this transistor looks like either two diodes face to face or back to back. So I'll just draw that real quickly. Okay, so we have two transistors here, effectively. All right, so here we have a P and P, and we have an N, P, N transistor, okay? Now, how your diode checker checks these transistors is just like this. This lead is always the base, okay? These leads can be either the emitter or collector, Okay, so what you do is you take your diode checker, which is going to test the, a normal transistor. It's going to look just like a normal diode with about, uh, you know, between 0.6 and 0.7 of a volt forward. You'll see that on your diode checker, okay? So this here is the base lead. So you take the negative lead for a PNP transistor. You take the negative of your diode checker, touch it to the base, 
take one the positive lead of your diode checker, touch it to the collector, it should read as a diode, and then remove that lead and touch it to the emitter, and it should check as another diode. You've effectively just tested your transistor. It works if it tests out as two diodes, really, most in most cases. So, and it's the same thing with an NPN. You take the positive lead of your diode checker, touch it to the base, take the negative, touch it to the collector, it reads as a diode, and then touch the emitter, and it reads as another diode. So if you draw this out, you can see that it's it's pretty simple. NPN, this is your, your lead from your diode checker, and then you use the other lead to either touch the collector or the base. And that's how simple it is to, to check your transistors with just a normal diode checker. Now, this particular system isn't incredibly thorough, but it works very, very well, and I've found many, many, many faults by doing it this way. For more in-depth uh, tests, you're going to need to uh, have a curve tracer or uh, uh, you know, a transistor checker or something like that for leakage and for all for gain and looking at that. But for in most cases, when a transistor fails in a circuit, it's usually a gross failure. It's usually open or it's closed or it's is you know being shorted or it's open, right? So that's basically what this is going to test for. You're going to see a even if the diode is a little bit leaky, it's sometimes your meter will even show that up. So, you know, it'll be like one side will read 0.66 and the other side will read 0.2. And you're thinking, mm, that's not right. So there's something wrong with that transistor, right? It should be 0.6 something and 0.6 something the other way. And uh, away you go. Now, if you want to test a germanium transistor, the forward on a uh, germanium transistor is between 0.2 and 0.3 something usually. I've seen them as low as going down into the, you know, into the high ones. So depending on the germanium transistor. So germanium transistors are a completely different beast. And um, they get greatly affected by temperature too. So this here is a standard uh, silicon transistor, and um, most of them are, anyways. And um, that's basically what we're focusing on: is the newer sort of, of transistors. You want to test germanium transistors? I say you're going to be looking for lower ratings. So that's it. That's pretty much how you check it. That's that simple. As I say, if you're going to check them in circuit, you know you're going to have to get used to it. You know, if you're going to, you know, do this a lot in circuit, because there's a lot of parts and pieces that will make the transistors look faulty, but you'll get a feel for it after a while. The best way to do it is actually remove the transistor or the suspect transistor and test it out of circuit. But if you can get away with doing it in the circuit, by all means, give it a shot. So when, of course, you're doing this, make sure that the circuit is, you know, completely unpowered and disconnected from any kind of electricity, because uh, A, you'll damage your meter and you could damage yourself too. So just be careful with that. And um, have fun. Hopefully this will help you out a little bit and make your uh, testing a little bit easier. All right. If you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And my next video that I make, you'll get an automatic notification. Uh, it might be on vacuum tubes or parts or who knows. It's usually about something. I'll see you next time.